Gilda, you're on. Mi shebeira avoteinu mekor habracha leimoteinu may the source of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say amen. Mi imoteinu mekor habracha leavoteinu bless those in need of healing with refuah lema the renewal of body the renewal of spirit and let us say amen amen um karen can you unmute yourself or do you need me to unmute you no i'm good yes okay. you can hear me a little louder Okay, um, so I'm going to wait for the, um, the slides. Um, okay, okay. Um, I, hello everyone. I have some 139 um, and it is really a privilege to be able to do this. Um, when I saw it was 24 verses, I wasn't so sure, but, but I'm okay, I'm okay. Um, uh, I referred to Robert Alter's book of Psalms, and I also referred to the Holy Scriptures and Jewish Family Bible, according to Masoretic text, it, it belonged to my parents, as well as other sources. The Safaria text, which is what we are reading today, has a slightly different translation of some parts of the psalm. The theme of this psalm is the reality that David stands before God and there is nothing that God doesn't know about him. This psalm is, all, is recited during the week of Parshah Bereshit. In Psalm 139, we learn three characteristics of God. Omniscient, the state of having unlimited knowledge. Omnipotent, the quality of having unlimited power. Omnipresent the ability to be present in all places at the same time. David saw having a right knowledge of God as essential to living a fulfilling life with purpose. Psalm 139 is part of the final Davidic collection of Psalms comprising Psalms 138 through 145, which are attributed to David in the first verse. The Masoretic text states God's all-seeing providence, which is explained in the first 12 verses. When a religious being is said to give people providence, he's taking care of them, providing for them. In verses 1 to 12, this is such a powerful psalm, one of the most introspective, as in you searched me and you know me. Essentially, a meditation on God's searching knowledge of man's innermost thoughts, on the limitations of human knowledge, and on God's inescapable presence throughout the created world. David saw having, oh, said that already. Verse five alludes to the formation of the first man as well as verse 16. Themes of the Psalm relate to Adam while David wrote the actual words and is the speaker. Verses eight to 10 are included in Tefillah Hadera, the traveler's prayer. Verse 10 
right hand of God means to be at the right side, is to be identified as being in a special place of honor, and guide, God will guide me. In verses 13 to 20, we see the infinite mercies of God. One of the greatest passages in all literature here talks about the miracle of human conception and birth. David declares that God is present at conception and birth because we are made in the image of God and he has a special plan and purpose for each person who is born. David describes God intricately weaving and embroidering a masterpiece in the mother's womb. God does more than just design and form us. He also planned, determined, and numbered our days. God has given us such a marvelous body and life, setting forth his plans and purposes for us before the beginning of time itself. If we believe that we are created in the image of God, formed and knitted uniquely by him, then we must also believe he has a plan and purpose for each of our lives. Verse 13 refers back to verse 11 and 12. Darkness being in my mother's womb, but the pitch black of night could be my light. No one is hidden from God in his most secret condition, yet unborn. He was under the control and guardianship of God. Verse 14 refers to how David evolved in the womb from an unformed embryo to a particular human being with the consciousness of his own individuality. Verse 16, the days were fashioned might mean the future days of the child to be born were already given shape in the womb. Verse 16 is the only place in the Tanakh where the word galmi, which is the first word of the verse, comes from the same root as golem, which is the first word, which is the first whoops, in the word golem appears. Um, in describing the creation of Adam hour by hour, the Talmud states that in the second hour, the dust from the earth was gathered into a golem or unformed mass. A midrash on Genesis chapter five, verse one, also describes Adam's creation as a golem of immense size, stretching from one end of the earth to the other. This is reflected in this verse in which Adam says to God, your eyes saw my golem. Verse 18, God's eternal presence with all those endless divine thoughts is still with David. The last section of the Psalm, verses 21 to 24, prayer against the wicked. David seems to go from praising God's infinite qualities to standing with God against God's adversaries. But in verse 23, echoes of verse one mark a closure. Examine me, O God, and know my mind. Probe me and know my thoughts. Look me through and through and tell me what thou thinkest of me. Verse 24, and even though wayward thoughts are imagined to vex God with the verb, lead me now, a submission entirely to divine guidance in the future is wholly positive. The psalm addresses God and David calls out and establishes a salutation and an understanding of what he knows God to be. He goes on to marvel at the omnipresence of God, even in the most secret of places, and praises God for God's vast knowledge of the future. Finally, David concludes by asking God to slay the wicked and stands against them, assuring God of his fervor, of supreme authority and being able to witness everything. Through this Psalm, David insists on God being the only true God and challenges anyone to question his faith. Um, at the end of my reading of the Psalm, I'm going to play um, um, music that uh, is Psalm 139, which is absolutely amazing. Hopefully you can hear it. Um, so Susan, if you could put the slides up. Thank you.
for the leader of David, a psalm. O oh Lord, you have examined me and know me. When I sit down or stand up, you know it. You discern my thoughts from afar. You observe my walking and reclining and are familiar with all my ways. There is not a word on my tongue, but that you, O oh, oh Lord, know it well. You hedge me before and behind. You lay your hand upon me. It is beyond my knowledge. It is a mystery. I cannot fathom it. Where can I escape from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I descend to Sheol, you are there too. If I take wing with the dawn to come, to rest on the western horizon, even there your hand will be guiding me, your right hand will be holding me fast. If I say, surely darkness will conceal me, night will provide me with cover. Darkness is not dark for you. Night is as light as day. Darkness and light are the same. It was you who created my conscience. You fashioned me in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am awesomely, wondrously made. Your work is wonderful. I know it very well. My frame was not concealed from you when I was shaped in a hidden place, knit together in the recesses of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed limbs. They were all recorded in your book. In due time, they were formed to the very last one of them. How weighty your thoughts seem to me, O oh God, how great is their number. I count them, they exceed the grains of sand. I end, but I'm still with you. O oh God, if you would only slay the wicked, you murderers away from me, who invoke you for intrigue, your enemies who swear by you falsely. O oh Lord, you know I hate those who hate you and loathe your adversaries. I feel a perfect hatred toward them. I count them my enemies. Examine me, O oh God, and know my mind. Probe me and know my thoughts. See if I have vexatious ways and guide me in ways everlasting. And I'm going to... Um, the first word of this psalm is, is mizmor, meaning a poem sung to the accompaniment of a stringed instrument. And when I look for music for this psalm, there are a lot of versions, but um, I chose this one be, uh, by Elias Aguello because I felt it was the most uh, powerful. I will only play a little bit since it is 12 minutes long, but you can access the link. I can. I can type the link in for you. Um, so let me see if hopefully you can hear it. Yeah. Aaron, can you move it closer to the speaker in the computer?
Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. That was lovely. Um, I heard you say that you studied from a book that your parents owned. It was your parents' book? Yes, it was. Your parents', your parents memory blesses you every day. So thank you, thank you so much for, thank you, thank you. Um, our friend Toby is going to um, read the Kaddish list and, and actually Toby is going to lead us in Kaddish today too. No, um, Barbara Finkel is going to lead us in Kaddish. Excellent, thank you so I'm much. Done. Um, she thank has a yard site for her father. Oh, so okay. she's gonna do that. But um, when, I'm, when we're finished with that, I do have a Trish Arlen piece if you think we have time for it. So we you always have time for you, Toby. Oh. <laughs> okay. So in our hearts, we lovingly recall Evelyn Selig, Sue Press, Leona Elligberg, Dolores Megan, Phyllis Haas, David Coplin, Louis Hoser, Ivan Stanton, Julie Wynn, Louis Berlin, Hilda Stern, Sylvia Kraus, Hope Dellen, Cy Kane, Nina Asserson, Richard Marheat, Lillian Rappaport, Eden Rich, Susan Berman Levine, Avraham Ben Hirsch Lieb, Lillian Tobias, Helen Goldberg, Dr. J. Marlin, Lillian Hornick, Donna Spector, Rabbi Ken Roseman, Stephen Lazarus, Stephen Carlin, Richard Marrick, Doris Kaufman Shaman, Benjamin Zimmerman, Moshe Eliezer, Thornton Soup Safferstein, Herb Lubars, Allison Stopel Weaver, Harold I. Abramson, Judy Berger, Madeline Saul, Rabbi Micah Kaplan, Nissan Yisrael Ben Yaakov Aryeh, Sarah Bat Avraham, Raymond Raskin, Raymond Sassoon, Nachman Ben Leah, Devorah Bat Albert Miller, Joan Sitfer, Hannah Bat Shimon Vakarline, Helen Rose, Leah Barker, Robert Thrope, Robbie Cohen, Margot Grossbein, Florence Lotstein, Joan Steiner, Michael Silverman, Miriam Lehman, Ellen Babbitt, Michael Barr, Waylon Beth Wingen, Lucille Vey, Theodore Fishman, Carol Hope Taub, Michael Ward, David Levy, Howard Gould, Rabbi Shlomo Balter, Sherry Litt, Rabbi Rachel Bod Orr, Henry Aaron, Gloria Fischel, Minna Olk Katz, Anne Butler, Leonard Finkelstein, Sybil Belfer, Avraham David Ben Elchanan, Skylar Logano, Henry Kritzer, Alan Goldberg, Anita Helfand, Doris Gruskin, Barry Gordon, and Gershon Yitzchak Ben Shmuel Tzvi. May their memories always be a blessing and bring us comfort. Barbara, thank you. It's your turn now. Susan. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. Yit Kadal, Vit Kadash, Mehrabah, Amen. Shishpatata, 
Thank you, Barbara, for leading us in Mourners Kaddish and um, and today's your father's website. It's actually on Sunday, but this was my opportunity to say it. So thank what you. What was your father's name? Gerald Silver. Okay, may his memory be for a blessing, Barbara. Thank you for sharing thank with you. us. Toby. Okay, so our friend, Trisha Arlen, is a amusing for Shabbat. It's called a prayer for stopping. So this is what happened. On the way to Shul Shabbat morning, I run into Max, also on his way there, and I walk with him. We get to the corner, the light is red, but there are no cars to be seen. I start to cross, Max doesn't. I walk back to him puzzled. The light turned green, he crosses. You don't jaywalk? He smiles. This is New York, everyone jaywalks. Ah, not on Shabbat, I ask. That's it, Max says. Every day we rush, rush, rush. On Shabbat, when the light tells me to slow down or stop, I slow down or stop. I get it, I say, fantastic, love it. And I try it on the way home that afternoon. How fun, a new minhag, all walk signs, a little white walking man until I get to the corner two blocks from home. Don't walk. There's no traffic in any direction. And the don't walk sign is a palm print, a red hamsa. Stop, says the hamsa, it's Shabbat. Meditate on the moment you are stopped. No future, no past, rest here on the corner of 14th Street and 8th Avenue in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Rest, rest. I stop. It's driving me insane. There's no traffic. What am I waiting for? This is so not New York. I'm supposed to go forward whenever I can, whenever I can, not stop when I can go. And I can go. Only a few seconds more, I am sure. Friggin' Hamsa, where's the little white walking man? I want the walking man. People are walking past me. They must think I'm hurt or crazy, just standing on the corner. No traffic stopped. Damn you, Max. But I said I would stop, so I'm stopped. So I look around. I see the leaves on the sidewalk. I hear the sounds of Brooklyn Saturday afternoon. Some kids are shouting at each other. Across the street, a couple walks together, bumping each other as they move. Friendly bumps. I'm breathing. A dark box. I like dogs. I'm resting. Leaves on the sidewalk. Huh? Look, a nice kind of rust-colored one. Lays next to a maroon one. Looks good. Reminds me of the curtain on the Torah Ark. Nice. Here, just here. Not going forward. Not going backwards. Shabbat. Oh no, the light is green. There's the little white walking man. Too soon. I go on. Blessed God of my ancestors, inventor of Shabbat, thank you for the stopping and the not stopping. Amen. Amen. Wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Toby, you add so much. Thank you so much. Um, it's the inflection of the voice that does it, I think. So, um, anyway, I wanted to all uh, remind you, remind you all that um, this weekend, of course, Saturday night, Sunday morning, we gain a wonderful hour in this year. We fall back and the clocks. Um, so don't forget if you have uh, sisterhood women's league programs on Sunday morning, you wanna be on time. So make sure you check out your clocks and know what you're doing. 
And um, on the heels of last night's program, we're ready for another program on Monday night. I wanted to remind you that I, I, we just keep you busy day and night in Women's League. Monday night, we have a wonderful program scheduled. It's called Mikva, the original body of water, and it's under our health and wellness initiative. Um, it's seven o'clock East Coast time. And again, the link is on Women's League Week that came out on Tuesday this week. Mikva, the original body of water. Um, we want to thank Mindy Steinholz for uh, preparing this program for us. And um, I hope that all of you have a very restful and uh, meaningful Shabbat Shalom. I look forward to seeing every one of you next week. Stay safe, stay healthy. And um, Audrey? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for everything that you did this week to make the service wonderful. And again, thank you to Toby and Debbie. Great job every day. Yes. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone.